I think the greatest tool that you can use out here are your powers of observation, okay? All these gadgets that we wear don't mean squat if you don't use your powers of observation. So what I generally do is I'll step to the water and I'll take at least five or ten minutes and just sit back, relax, and watch the water to see what's going on out there. And he ties on a woolly butter. <laughs> 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 I enjoy fishing dry flies, so the thing that I will always do is try to give these fish and the bugs the benefit of the doubt. So I'll sit and watch for a while and try to see if I'm seeing any bugs that are flying around over the surface. Uh, I'm looking to see if there are any trout that are responding to them. Uh, if I'm not seeing any surface activity, then maybe it's not worth my time to bother putting on a dry fly. Maybe I want to fish subsurface instead. So. It's not rocket science or brain surgery, guys. If you're seeing activity on the surface, you might want to go with a surface fly. If you're seeing no activity on the surface, you're probably going to want to go subsurface and fish nymphs or woolly buggers or something like that. While we talk a bit <coughs> about what a nymph is and why, why would a trout be interested in a nymph? What does it represent in the life cycle of the fly? The nymph is, first of all, there are several different types of insects that you're going to see out here, okay? We have stoneflies, we have caddisflies, we have mayflies, and we also have diptera or midges, okay? All these insects go through different life stages. Uh, for example, the caddisfly starts off uh, in a larval stage, develops into a, and goes through a pupa stage, and then develops into the adult from there. A mayfly starts off uh, in a, as an egg, as a fertilized egg, hatches into a nymph. That nymph crawls around on the bottom for, you know, roughly a year going through different instars or stages where it's going to grow, then molt its exoskeleton, then har its new exoskeleton is going to harden up and it's going to continue to grow and feed and grow and feed until it reaches maturity. Once it reaches maturity, it is going to break free of its home, which is crawling around in between the rock crevices, underneath woody debris, stuff like that. And it's going to free float through the current and swim and work its way up to the surface, at which point it's going to climb out of its shuck or its exoskeleton. And underneath is the fully developed adult. So once that fly hits the surface, it climbs out of its exoskeleton will rest its wings and its body on the surface, let the wings dry off, and then it flies off to the trees. Now, it's considered a dun at that stage, okay, which is the adult mayfly, but it's still not fully developed yet. It's not fully sexually developed yet. Once it hits the trees, it's going to molt its skin one more time, and that transforms into the spinner stage of the mayfly. That's when it reaches full sexual maturity, and sometimes that evening, if the conditions are right, that, those flies will fly back out over the water. The males will latch onto the females over top of them, fertilize the female's eggs. The female deposits the eggs on the surface in what looks like a small egg sac. Once that egg sac hits the water, it just explodes and all these little eggs drift down to the bottom, get nestled into the substrate, and eventually those eggs will hatch and the cycle starts all over again. It's a neat cycle, quite, quite honestly, I think, because these insects, were, basically they live for almost one day and die. If the conditions are right, they will hatch that day and they will mate that day and die that day. They can last for a few days if the conditions aren't right for them, but essentially it's just that they don't even have a working mouth, okay? Once these insects hatch, they don't eat or drink. They are just there to simply procreate and die. It's a really neat life cycle.